to Nunez Nunchi, where I do a deep dive into some of your favorite K-dramas from a mental health perspective. In honor of today's theme for today's episode, look what I'm wearing. It says girl boss. I am a girl boss. I run my own private practice, my own therapy practice, and I am an entrepreneur, my own boss, girl boss. So what am I gonna be talking about today? I want to outline some of the strong female characters that I admire as a businesswoman in several K-dramas of 2020. Let's start with the CEO of Sandbox, Yoon Taepyeonim, who even Han Ji Pyong respects, and you can clearly see that, and he reports to her. I really loved her persona. She had this mild temperament, laid back feel, and this warmth about her that I really liked. Yes, it's a K-drama, but you don't always see that. CEOs portrayed that way, let alone female leaders in business. I really liked that she was approachable, engaging, uh, really invested in mentoring as well. You don't see that either. You don't necessarily always have a CEO also a mentor, which she was for One and Jay's company. And speaking of which, One and Jay, right? Tanami's older sister and Tanami. Episode three really outlines both of their fork in the road when it comes to business. Tanami ends up quitting her job for the coffee company. She brought in record sales, record sales, but what happened? She was looking for a full-time job and knew her worth, her value. She was good at what she did. However, she wasn't offered that full-time job. This is where I want to say that Tanami realized her value and worth and Won and Jay understood her value and worth. This is very important to your mental health and identity. I'm talking about the bamboo ceiling. The bamboo ceiling, a phrase first coined by Jane Hyun, woo, breaking the bamboo ceiling, her book. Basically, the Asian version of glass ceiling. Okay. Yes, it very much exists. I've also experienced this. And of course, being an Asian female, so in these K-dramas, Korean female can add another layer of the bamboo ceiling, right? The bamboo ceiling basically being where you're capped, where you're expected to have a certain, almost a stereotype to fit the leadership role of C-suite level. I want to share that Tanmi ends up quitting her job. She says, no, I'm leaving. Tanmi says, I want to take the elevator to the 32nd floor. What does that mean? Well, a delivery guy was uh, dropping off a package for the CEO's office of that company that Tangmi worked for, and they said that they had to take another elevator to the 32nd floor. She realized then, you know what? I don't want to take the elevator to the 16th floor. I want to be in that elevator or be on the 32nd floor. So she wanted to be CEO, and that's when she realized her dream, or actually that's where a seed was planted, where she found her value and worth and knew what her value and worth was. Now we're talking about one in Jay. I love this scene too. Also in episode three. Now she had a little bit of blow. Her stepdad's like, hey, go to America and start the US branch. I'm gonna, you know, have my son keep doing what you started in the Korean branch. And that was just a low blow to her. And that's when she realized, wait a second. So I did all this to groom him because remember he was her secretary. You know, one in Jay had that unlikableness at times, right? Because we really adore Tanya's character or we, you know, that she's the main lead and then we have the second lead. But of course we wanted Tanya and her sister to have that special bond. So she had that unlikableness at times, but then obviously in the end we rooted for her. So we really liked the scene, well I did anyway, in episode three in that boardroom, when her stepdad basically was saying, hey, she's out and my son is in to take over the company as CEO of Morning Group. And she says, you know, basically, no, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'm not going to go to the U.S. and take over the U.S. branch. I'm going to do my own thing. She doesn't really declare that then, but that's what she had in her mind, that she was above this, where she realized and understood her own value and worth. This is super important to your mental health. Do you know how many times I see professionals, not just women, not just women, but those women and men who don't feel valued at work? So I would ask you now, there's some things that we cannot control at work, like your employer, manager, team leads that may or may not value you, but you need to understand that it does affect your emotional, social, and psychological well-being. It can cause, you know, depressed state at times of, Hey, I don't feel valued at work. I'm taken advantage of. I see that a lot. These are real life issues that, that bring people to therapy. Also anxiety of feeling like you have to live up to these expectations. Uh, we're talking about model minority, bamboo ceiling, where because, and you, may, you might have to live up more to those expectations than other people because of perhaps being Asian American or female. And yes, that still exists. I use my voice 
to have an executive presence. And I actually believe that is what Won and Jae and So Danmi did in their scenes where they quit their jobs or basically left to really show their value and worth because they believed in themselves. The tones in their voices showed an executive presence. That's important. You don't want to sound meek and mild when you're about to make a switch or you want to be heard. You don't, you don't want to look down. That is you know, technically the Asian way. I am a therapist, yes, but I was previously in business and I am a businesswoman. I understand about marketing yourself and that is important for your own self-confidence, your self-identity, your self-esteem, which all affect your mental health. That's why I'm very adamant about how you present yourself. Hey, deep inside, you may not be feeling that way. So let's talk about that scene where one and Jay tells her mom firmly, yeah, no, I just like kind of basically said, yeah, you know, screw you. I'm going to start my own company. I'm not going to take your offer going to the U.S. and, you know, building up the morning group U.S. branch. No way. I deserve better than that. And the mom's like, okay, so now do you feel better now? You feel relieved? And she goes, yes, I do. So she showed that strength to her own mother. But yet as she walked away, I thought this was, this was actually a touching scene for me. Pretty poignant where she actually goes, no, I don't feel re relieved. I feel like crap. But basically she didn't feel good and that is the reality folks that you can market yourself in certain ways yes and you want to show your value and worth definitely in the workplace but the truth is it also brings on some distressful emotions which i want you to be aware of because it's not easy to be confrontational who does want to be confrontational not really some people say oh yeah i don't mind conflict and i don't mind first of all conflict's a normal part of life so you do you do need to understand how to manage it but it's still brings on these emotions that are tough to take. And we see her close to tears. Actually, she was actually tearing up, maybe about to cry as she was walking off that scene that she felt like crap, despite having walked away from the job because it hurts. It hurts when you're not valued, in that case by her stepfather, but her boss. And it does hurt when you're not valued at work or for what you do. That is a huge part of why we do what we do as well. And, and it can really affect our mental health. And that's why I say to parents, especially affirming your kids, praising them. You don't have to praise them for each and everything. Oh, I'm so glad you did this, or thank you for doing this. Really praise them for characteristics. Like I love the way that, I love how outgoing you are. I love how you're such a good friend to your, to your friends. Or I really like that you're a leader. So when they're in the workplace, they're successful because they believe in themselves. Strong female characters, I love that. Now, is that realistic of Korean culture, American culture? I believe that's the hope. That is why we also watch K-dramas, for hope, um, for seeing the things that we want to see happen. So I'm not saying that's not necessarily reality, but I do know that society in Korea is shifting. Here it's shifting. We need more women female leaders. And seeing that, I hope, inspires some people. So that was inspirational for me. And then, of course, another female character, Itaewon class, right? Cho Isa, right? The manager of Tanbang. Now, what I really liked about her, and I and there were some college students that said, especially a male, actually, really liked her character because he thought she was unconventional, somewhat of the dynamic, domineering female, a strong female that he liked to see that you generally haven't seen in Korean dramas. You tend to see the meek and mild, poor girl, you know, really being chased after the main guy. But we're seeing a shift, especially in 2020, I feel like I've seen a shift. And maybe it was there before, but it really came out in some of the dramas in 2020. Itaewon class, I mean, Tambam has changed because of the manager, Choi So, who switched the things around. And she basically takes over now. She says something really cool in episode five. Five to Pak Saroi, Pak So Jin's character, and I really liked it. She's like, "Hey, if you think I'm some you know dumb twenty year old that really doesn't really know what she's doing, and I'm young, and what am I gonna be able to provide, Tambam? What can I do? Hey, I'm fine with that." But basically, I would think of you as an idiot, so why would I want to work with you? That was a cool scene, and the guy that liked her, I forget his name, uh, was like, "Whoa, that's super cool." He admired her for that, for saying that. Basically, she's saying, if you don't see my strengths, what I'm good for, my value and worth, that I don't want to work with you anyway. That was very important for her to say. And then later on, I really like this when he's like, well, why do you want to be the manager of Tom Bomb or why do you want to be um, working for me when I can't pay you? What, what is it? And she goes, some, a gut feeling that I have. Side note, which I'll talk about later, maybe in another episode, your gut is your second brain. So she's like, I have a gut feeling that I'm, you're, you're meant to, I'm meant to take a gamble here and be part of Tambam. And she does, she builds it, right? And she's the manager at 20 years old. Great character, very strong, direct, at times a little bit brash, you're like, ooh, right? Uh, unconventional, 
even I was a little like, oh, well, that's not, that's different, but a good different. One just says the same thing in that boardroom. Yeah, you want this idiot taken over. Um, I don't know if necessarily in real life we would technically speak like that. I believe it has been done. I. I do guide a lot of people in the therapy room about how to navigate a tough conversation. And you wanna do it in a way that you don't burn bridges. That's important to say, that's realistic. You don't wanna burn a bridge, but you also wanna show your value and worth because you believe in yourself. And then lastly, kind of me saying very calmly, thank you for everything you've done for me. I'm just gonna move on. She didn't really say, you know, screw you, no. She was a little bit more, uh, I would say diplomatic, but left and took her thing. So she was, she showed more in the actions of what she believed. Again, value and worth, you wanna feel that in the workplace and what you do, everybody does. We all want kudos, I don't care what you say. It's so not given in our Asian culture, so parents, if you're seeing this, I hope that you could give kudos to your kids. Hey, great job, you're really good at this. Yes, sometimes it's about what they do and their achievements, but I hope most of the time you're looking at their characteristics. What the strengths, what strengths do they have? What skills do they have? That is being solution focused. Not looking at what they don't have. Oh, you're not, you've gotta be better at this. You're not good. No, looking at, wow, you really do this well. And that helps you parents see that. And it shifts the entire tone of a conversation. Gives your kids self-efficacy where they're later on in life, you want them to be that CEO or CFO or you know executive director of a nonprofit or an entrepreneur with their own innovative ideas where they're gonna change the world. And my last example is from the king, sorry, Yi Min Ho, right? In that, there's a female, strong female character leader in that too. Mm -hmm. The first female prime minister of the Korea, the C Korea, the parallel universe, the parallel world, right? I want to say the fake Korea, kind of, right? Um, she's the female prime minister. So she's like head honcho in politics, in charge. And they show her as a very strong female with glamour. You have a king and then you have a prime minister who's female. So she exuded that strength and I like a lot of her comments. She had that same tone, the presence. Again, talk, going back to the executive presence, very important how you present yourself. I talk about marketing, um, even in my clinical work, how you market yourself, showing your strengths is very important for people to buy into what you're saying. And that's why I use my voice to promote good mental health and well-being in the workplace, in the community, in families. Why, even though it's difficult, just like one and just showed that emotion of like it feeling crappy, it's also difficult for me too to be speaking to corporate folks and executives and leaders, Caucasian males, where they may like, like they're looking at me like, what? are you telling me what to do? So I, I also wanna have that boundary of not telling them what to do, but be show my passion purpose, but strength in what I believe in. And that's important. So marketing yourself well, that's super important in business and whatever you want to do. And even parents, you also have to market yourself to your kids. Hey, showing that firmness of like, this is why I'm disciplining you, or this is why I'm teaching you this. This is why I want you to do this. Showing that uneasiness, you know, that little like, mm, I'm not really sure what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but if you're trying to get a point across, make sure you get that point across well, because the kids can feel that you know, like uneasiness. They're like, mm, I don't think my mom really means to ground me. So I'm not gonna take her seriously. This is when I come, I get this a lot from parents when it comes to disciplining. Yeah, follow through, follow through with consequences. If you're gonna say you're gonna take their phone, take their phone and say how long you're gonna take their phone for. Be very firm about it and why. It's hard, I'm gonna make point this out. You have the emotions behind it. Yes, it is normal to feel distress when you're doing it, stressed out, dripping with sweat. Do you know how many times right before I speak or even as I'm speaking, I'm dripping with sweat? Because I'm also nervous and anxious and I'm anticipating a lot and wanting to perform well and do my best in my work. That is all normal. Except, don't you feel good at the end when you've accomplished something? And that's important for parents raising kids, for us in the workplace, knowing our value and worth. How do we do that? I think it's not a streamlined thing for me to say, this is what you do, because it's not easy. You don't wanna burn a bridge, you don't wanna cause a scene at work, you wanna be a good example, but I want you to understand what is your value and worth and bring that up. When you go into a conversation with a manager or your employer asking for something, know exactly what you wanna ask for. Don't be like, um, yeah, I just wanna, I'm, I'm unhappy. Don't focus on that, focus on, you know what I wanna get? I want to be promoted by year end and and what do I need to do that? Be very firm. They're going to they're going to love your eagerness, right? Now and if they don't or if you get the sense 
they're not there to promote you or they don't see your value and worth, then I ask you to reconsider where you need to be, right? And you can make a job switch when needed or make a career switch when needed at the right time. Yes, it's doable. I've done it. I know many people have done it. But again, understanding and wanting to be affirmed at work by colleagues, your managers, your employers, parents affirming their kids, kids needing that, so important for your emotional, social, and psychological well-being. So that, my folks, I just wanted to outline the female characters, Kalmi, Inje, Yuntepio in Startup, and then you have the king, the female prime minister, and of course, in Tambam, uh, Choisa, the manager. Wow, she really switches that around. Look at episode five, that line. You're an idiot if you don't want to work with me, so I don't want to work with you either if that's the case, right? If that's the case. But you see Pak Choisa's character go, ah, okay, I think you can turn this place around. And she does. Great example in the K-dramas of today.